My name's Claire Hopkins. I'm a professor of rhinology in London and I'm going to give some short advice for patients with chronic rhinosinusitis during the COVID-19 pandemic. A question that many of you may be asking is why your outpatient appointment or your planned surgery has been cancelled. This is important for two reasons. Firstly and foremost, our priority is to protect you from the risk of acquiring infection. For example, in travelling on public transport to your appointment, in coming into contact with other people and patients in the hospital. The second reason is to try and protect healthcare workers from acquiring infection that they can pass on to other patients and to other doctors in the system, which is already under pressure through sickness. Many patients who acquire COVID-19 infection are actually what we call asymptomatic silent carriers. They may not exhibit any of the typical symptoms of infection, such as cough or fever, but they are still able to pass on transmission. During an outpatient appointment in ENT, it's quite common to have a procedure called nasendoscopy performed. That is where a doctor inserts a tiny camera into the nose to inspect the state of the nasal cavity in the openings of the sinuses, for example, to look for evidence of infection or polyps. This is what we call an aerosol generating procedure, as it can often trigger a sneeze or a cough that can then disperse viral particles in an aerosol causing a high risk of transmission to anyone in the room. We're therefore trying to minimise this other than in essential cases. For all those patients that have had appointments delayed, you should continue with your normal medication. You should find out from your own healthcare system how you can obtain repeat prescriptions where necessary, either from primary care or from your ENT department. For all patients on nasal steroids, you should continue as usual, and there is no risk with these as they're not absorbed into the body, particularly on the newer formulations such as fluticasone or memetasone. For patients who are on a maintenance oral steroid, again, there's no need to be alarmed, but it might be worth discussing whether you should continue this with your ENT or asthma doctor. There are some studies in China from early on in the pandemic that suggested that those patients with most severe respiratory distress who were given oral steroids had poorer outcomes than those who did not. Now the difficulty in interpreting these studies is it's quite likely that the most severely ill were given the steroids in order to try anything possible and therefore it's simply this underlying severity that was associated with the poorer outcomes and not the steroids. Nonetheless the World Health Organization has currently recommended against using oral steroids to treat severe respiratory symptoms in COVID-19 infection. For the same reason, we're therefore advising against the use of oral steroids to treat sudden onset loss of smell associated with the infection. As early on in the course of the disease, particularly in the first week, it can be difficult to be certain who may go on to develop more severe respiratory symptoms. And we want to avoid anything that might make you worse. If you're on oral steroids for your asthma, you should already be shielding, that is social distancing and keeping yourself out of contact with other people to avoid the risk of infection. And if you're doing this, there should be no concern about continuing with oral steroids, but certainly a decision to start a new course for an acute exacerbation needs to be undertaken with careful considerations of the potential risks. For those patients with aspirin exacerbated respiratory disease who have been desensitized, there is no concern about continuing to take your daily aspirin. Certainly early reports about increased risk with ibuprofen have now been largely disproved and the World Health Organization are not advising to avoid non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs so you can continue to take your aspirin. This will be important as many patients also have asthma and having well controlled asthma is particularly important at the current time. There's been a lot in the press about the link, potential link between loss of sense of smell and COVID-19 and there's another short video to further explain this. For patients that have already lost their sense of smell as a result of their chronic rhinosinusitis, you might be worried if you would still be able to detect if you've developed COVID-19 infection. What we found for the majority of patients who've lost their sense of smell with COVID-19 infection is that they've had other symptoms as well. For example, the better known symptoms such as cough or fever, but also they've developed symptoms such as muscle ache, fatigue, tummy upsets, runny nose, ear aches and chest pain. Certainly you would be able to identify these if they'd happened recently, even if you can't detect a sudden change in your sense of smell. For all those patients with chronic rhinosinusitis that 
still have their sense of smell. If this is suddenly lost during the current pandemic, it's certainly worth considering whether this is a sign of COVID-19 infection, particularly if you haven't noticed a significant increase in nasal obstruction. During the pandemic, most patients we've managed at home and we're trying to avoid any trip to a hospital unless absolutely certain. If you have chronic rhinosinusitis, you should look out for the following red flag symptoms. If you develop any severe headache, new onset drowsiness, any weakness or any other neurological signs, particularly any change in vision, sudden swelling or redness around the eyes. These can all potentially be signs of complications of chronic rhinosinusitis and should prompt you to seek emergency care.